Hello. In today's lesson, we are going to write at least two classes. The first one will be to create a friend object. And this friend object, we are going to then store inside a second class, which will be our friend array class. So in our friend array class, we want to have an array as one of the fields of that class. And the elements of this field will be friend objects. So that's what we want to do today. Let's look at the instructions. You want to store the details about your friends, such as their names and ages, addresses and telephone numbers. And using this information, you want to be able to do all sorts of functions like searching and finding a friend's telephone number or even printing them out alphabetically. So each friend object must have a name and an age. We can fill this in either via a text file or from the keyboard. That doesn't matter now. You will need a toString method and our class diagram looks as follows. The friend class consists of a name and an age. These are the fields. By the way, that minus indicates that this is a private field. And that is a private field. So name is of type string and age is of type integer. And these will be the methods. And the methods, because they have a little plus sign next to them, they will be public. So I have a constructor method. That's the first one. And we know it's the constructor because it has the same name as the class name. So that's our constructor method. And you can see this is a parameterized constructor. We have some get methods, get name and get age. And we have the two setters, set name and set age with these variables. And of course, my two string method. So typically, you know by now that we will have to start by creating a class called tfriend with two private variables. We need a constructor method, we need the accessor and mutator methods, we need the toString method, and then we must save our class. So we could have had, I could have removed all this writing down below here by just giving you this diagram, this class diagram for the friend class. And you know, you must create a class with these two fields, and they must be private, and that's their data type, and that these must be the methods. So let's go and do that now. So here I've done that already. I've saved my class as friend underscore you, but I've named the type tfriend because it's type friend, which is a class. And it has these two fields, a field name, which is string, and a field age, which, which is an integer. It has the parameterized constructor, which receives a name and an age as incoming parameters. It has those two getters as functions, and these two set methods as procedures or mutator methods, and of course the function toString. This is not strange. You've done many of these in the past. I will slowly scroll down and show you, although we do have a model answer on the web as well. So my constructor is very easy. I merely assign the two parameters, those are the parameters, to the two fields. My get methods are easy, nothing to them. My two set methods as procedures, also very easy we take the parameters coming in and save them there let's just talk about the two get methods we take the two fields and return them as a result of those two methods okay as the two functions and then finally my two string method which is built up by taking merely the first name and a space and the age into string age so that's our first class here are the instructions for our friend array class. So we know already that our friend array class must have an array as a field and that the elements of this array will be the objects we created in the friend class. So here's our class diagram of the T friend array class. It has two fields. They are private because there are little minuses in front. They are private and friend must be an array of friends and f size is an integer okay so the only difference now between this and every other uh, object oriented class or user defined class that you've created is the fact that we suddenly have an array of objects i'll go into more detail soon and then of course our methods for this class would be these that one has to be the uh, constructor because it has the same name as the class you can see that from over there so this is the constructor it's a default constructor i have a function called get friend 
which returns a friend. So that's an object of the previous class. And it has this parameter as an input parameter. I have a function called getSize, which is an integer function. And I have these two procedures, a sort procedure and a search procedure. And of course, a two string method right at the end. Now, this class diagram gives us all the information we need in order to write the T friend array class. It tells us which types of fields it needs, a friend which is an array of type friend, and it needs a variable with, of size called integer, and that these are the methods that it needs. But here are some instructions to clarify. Declare a private array of T friend objects as FR friend and a private variable called F size to store the number of elements in the array that are being used, I should have said. So when the array is declared, the maximum number that is capable of storing must be specified. So this may be more than the actual number. In other words, right at the beginning, when you declare your array, you must decide, okay, let's try and see if 300 or 100 elements is more than I need, because we don't know exactly how many you're going to need. So you declare your array size slightly larger, and you can always change it later, but you can't change it while the program's running. So we make it fairly large at the beginning. Write code for each of the methods, and that's all the information they give you. And this means that you have a constructor method for our friend, and this constructor is a default constructor. There are no parameters. There is already a constructor for friend in its own class. So you need to create a constructor for the array friend, okay, for this new class of ours. And this constructor can be default without parameters because it must now load information from the text file. And there's a text file that you can use. And this is what our text file looks like. Annabelle, hash, and then the age, and it terminates with a hash at the end before the next item starts on the next line. So let's look at the code. I have given you uh, on the website the, the exact constructor, but let's go and look at the code. My unit is saved as friend array underscore u, and my class has a t in front, t friend array equals class. So I have these two fields. I need a friend. So I've created a friend object, and I've created a friend array object. As a matter of fact, my instructions indicate that I do not need this friend, so let's delete it. I need a field, which is an array of friends, and I need a file size or an array size variable. So those are the two fields I need. I need a constructor, these two get methods, and the two procedures, and my two string. Now you've got the code of the constructor, but I'll go through it quickly. I need a text file variable, a temp string variable, so that I can read one line at a time from the text file, and then a name and an age. So initially I make f size equals to 1 or 0. It depends on your programming. I make it small. In other words, as if I haven't used anything yet. I check if the file exists. Scroll down, assi assign it, and reset it. And then while not in the file, begin. Read line, temp string. And by now you know this well. Copy up to just before the position of the hash into name. Delete from thing, string right up to and including the hash. And then age is string to int of the rest of that line just before the hash, because there's a second hash in this specific text file. I now call the constructor of the tfriend class, tfriend.create, with the two parameters of name and age. And I store this in f size. Remember, f size is 1 at this stage. I haven't increased it yet. So because f size is 1, this t friend will create a friend and store that whole friend into the array f size. And after that, I can increase f size now to 2. We could have made f size 0 at the beginning and done this increasing just before I assign it to f size over here. So just to make clear what happens in this line, I'm assigning a friend object, which I'm creating in this line by calling the parameterized constructor of the t friend class. And I'm assigning that to an element of the array. tr friend is my array. And in position 1, I put this friend. Great. I run through this. And right at the end, of course, 
I will have increased F size without creating a new or adding a new friend, and that's why I decrease F size at the end. Let's have a look at the other methods. We've sorted out the array. That's that one. Now we have a getter, get friend. It has a parameter, int pos. So in other words, a position of that element that we are uh, returning must be sent to this method. And this method has to be a function because it's a get method. It returns something of type friend. Let's go and look at that method. Get friend has a parameter that comes in. Uh, and we use this parameter for the position in the array of the friend I want to return. So I use spot as the index for the friend and I return the friend in that position. The next one will be in, uh, get size. That must be a function as well because it's a getter. So get size must merely return the size of the array. So there it is. Function t friend array dot get size returns an integer and the result is merely f size. Next will be the procedure to sort the array alphabetically. And I'm assuming that we are going to sort according to name. So here's our sort procedure. It doesn't have any parameters because we will always sort according to name in this case. Let's uh, look at the bubble sort that we have here. For outer loop equals f size down to 2, that's stock standard. Inner loop equals 1 to outer loop minus 1, that's stock standard. And now this is where you must pay attention. The array in square brackets inner loop dot get name because I'm sorting on the name property. If the name property of the element of the friend element in this position is greater than the name property of the friend in inner loop plus 1, then we will swap. Okay, so let me make that clear. In position in a loop of f array friend, there's a friend. Okay, it's an object. That object has a name and we return the name by using the function get name. The friend in the next position in the, in the array also has a name and we retrieve that name with the same function. But this time it's executed on the friend at position in a loop plus one. So if these two names or differ and this one's bigger then we will swap and look at how I swap I need a temporary variable of type friend now so temp has to be a friend temp becomes the friend at inner loop the friend at inner loop then changes to become the friend at inner loop plus one and finally the friend at inner loop plus one becomes the friend that is stored in temp so our sort procedure works exactly the same except that you must know that we need to use the method in order to get the name property of the friend at that position.